Feels like deja vu, doesn't it? Coming into the game in a few days' time off the back of Manchester United, drawing 1-1. Could have said the same thing after the Burnley game. Middlesbrough, Burnley, Southampton, 3-1-1 games. Three games where Manchester United control the first half and fall apart, collapse, go in on themselves in the second half. And now we've got Brighton, a team I think have only lost one away, one game away this season under Graham Potter. It's not going to be easy. It wasn't easy against Southampton. I'm going to run through my predicted starting 11 in this game. We're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to pull up the starting 11 that we saw against Southampton and explain the problems I saw in that team and maybe what I would do to try and correct some of those problems. Before I do begin, please, if you would, ladies and gentlemen, go down there, hit that subscribe button. It takes you one second. It's free. Hit that notification bell. You get a ping every time I go live with a video. But let's look at that team that started there against Southampton. And this was the team. Ronaldo started up front, Sancho on the right or the left, it doesn't really matter. I mean, technically, I think he started on the left-hand side, so I'll switch that to begin with. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because Sancho and Rashford, as we saw against Southampton, I think we saw it against Burnley as well, they've been interchanging quite a lot. Pobre and Bruno in front of McTominay, and it was a back five there of Delo, Varane, Maguire, Shaw and De Gea. And the key problem for Manchester United against Southampton was that. All of their attacks came down our left-hand side. Their right wing was where they were causing us problems. And we couldn't really do anything to stop it. I think in the, in the, in the same way as... Remember last season when we saw Maguire alongside Lindelof? And their weaknesses sort of exacerbated each other's flaws. Right now, Shaw... I thought Shaw was pretty damn awful against um, Southampton. Southampton and Burnley, he was two yards behind the defensive back line. So if we're looking at United playing a back line like this, playing the offside trap against uh, Burnley and against Southampton, Shaw, for some reason, has been, has been doing that. And it's caused two of our goals. I don't know what he's doing there. And I don't know. It's basic. It's the utter basic for a defender in the, in, in the same sense that it's utterly basic for a striker to be able to get his shot in goal. Hardest thing to do in football, though, right? Shaw, I wouldn't switch him out for Tellez. I don't think in this game, but I tell you, I absolutely have to switch Maguire for Lindelof. I thought that was a pretty much a given for this game, but maybe Lindelof's not as fit as we hope he is. And maybe he's still not fit enough to even play this game. So maybe it's going to be Maguire again. But again, Maguire, we saw against Southampton. He was getting turned inside out. He couldn't cope with the pace. He was, uh, he was basically chasing the ball all the time rather than being that defender that's sort of in the right place at the right time first. And his recovery is just not good enough. It's probably one of the weakest parts of his game. Just keeps getting exposed. I don't think he deserved to start against Southampton. And I wouldn't start him here against Brighton either. I would have preferred to see Lindelof coming in. And I'll be honest, I think you've got a fair argument for Tellez there as well. Um, but Tellez is a, is a more aggressive left back. So if anything, Shaw should be able to cover his position better. But so often, the space was in behind on our, on our left flank. I was like, where the hell is Luke Shaw? Out of position constantly against Southampton. And they punished us for it. Now, I'm going to move on to the midfield next, but before I do, please, if you would, just pause 45 seconds. You know what time it is. It's time for me to big up One Football, who are supporting United People's TV and have been one of the biggest supporters of United People's TV over the years. This is me saying, please go and download the app. There is a link in the description. It's free. It literally is a one-stop shop app. Go on there for all the latest Manchester United news, transfer news, all the build-up to the game, as well as this video, of course. Uh, but yeah, make sure you head over there, follow the link in the description, do me a favour, help United People's TV out by helping out one football. Everybody wins. But let's get back and let's talk about the midfield. Right, so let's move on to that midfield. As I said, straight back into it. Thank you very much to One Football, as I said always, for supporting United People's TV. Unlike this United team, who aren't supporting me at all right now. Jeez, the way we're playing. Now, McTominay, I thought he... Didn't play particularly well against Southampton. I think he lost possession too often. But I think with McTominay, it's, there's an issue. For sure, there's an issue. Pobre and Bruno, clearly, the number eight position, I think, is their best position in the team. But they love driving the ball forward. They love running with the ball. And what happens when all of a sudden Bruno is here and Pobre is there? I think McTominay's got a little bit of a tendency to sort of, oh, I'm going to go following. And all of a sudden... McTominay's got to cover that huge amount of space there. It's left United a little bit weak, a little bit exposed against Southampton, and it's a bit of an issue. Now, I don't really think it's going to change the starting 11. And again, I'd say that for the same reason I didn't change the starting 11 too much for this game against Southampton. 
We're creating chances left, right and centre right now. We cannot create any more chances, really. And games should be dead and buried by half time. So if I'm Ralph Rannick going in there, I, I wouldn't want to change too much. The thing I need to change as, as a manager is that second half mentality. But in terms of that starting 11, I think Pogba's going to stay there. I think Bruno's going to stay there. I think Matomane's going to stay there. Could he bring Fred in? Now, Fred, I think, is going to be fit and ready to play in this game. So maybe we could see Fred there. I don't particularly think he will, though. I think we're going to see that three. Maybe you'll see Fred come in for Matomane. I think Matic has got some sort of shin problem at the moment. So I don't think he's really going to start there. But I do think maybe we'll get a change up front. Because, look, I if you've watched my video I did, was it yesterday or was it Saturday? Yeah, I, Anyway, the video I did on Cristiano Ronaldo, I sort of discussed the problems with Ronaldo, discussed, as I said, an open conversation. We need to talk about Ronaldo. Don't ignore the elephant in the room with him anymore. I think the kind of the same goes, not as much, I don't think, but Marcus Rashford. He got the assist there for, Manche for Sancho's goal against Southampton, but Rashford, decision-making, he's looking like that Rashford, you know, that Rashford that sort of, Rashford that keeps his head down completely, runs at a defender, tries a little trick or a flick, doesn't get the ball, shrugs his shoulders, doesn't really track back that much. It was a big reason probably why Shaw was so exposed down the left-hand side there because he didn't have Rashford coming back with him. Um, but Rashford and Sancho were switching wings. Now, what I would probably do if I was Ralph Radnick, as I do that, I get Sancho on the right-hand side where I personally think he's more effective. Even if he got, he got, he's got his goal from the left and he was more effective on the left against Southampton, I would rather just see Sancho stick into his position out there. And I would, I would start Ilanga against... Um, against, uh, geez, Brighton, forgot who we were playing there. But then that even raises another question. And that's probably the biggest question of all. What do you do with Cristiano Ronaldo? Maybe what you do then is you don't take Ilanga on for Rashford. You take Ilanga on. So, yeah, you take Ilanga on for Ronaldo and you put Rashford up front. Rashford's not really a striker. But what this team needs is it doesn't need creativity. We're creating so much from here. That's not an issue. We're creating from there. That's not an issue. We're creating from there. That's not an issue. Our issue lies here. Our issue lies with the finishing. Now, I'm not saying that Rashford's going to be the answer to that or the solution to it. But with the way Ronaldo's playing right now, with the fact that Cavani's out with a groin injury, maybe we'll see that. Sod it. That's why I'm going to go for my predicted 11. Do I think he'll drop Ronaldo? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think he will. I think he should... I think he could. I feel like he should, but I feel like who's going to come in? Because we've got 35 year old Cavani who's injured anyway. Rashford, is he really going to be the man that goes up there? You're probably going to say no. You're probably going to say no. We'll stick to Ronaldo, the greatest goal scorer of all time, and hope that he can turn it. Because at some point, a bit like with Jaden Sancho when he was off form, no United fan was really worried. We knew at some point that Sancho would arrive, and he's arrived greatly in the last few games. But I. I don't think he'll drop Ronaldo, but I think it's the biggest question mark you've probably got about this starting eleven: is do you drop Cristiano Ronaldo and do you drop Harry Maguire? I think the answer for Maguire is yes. I think you bring Lindelof in. Maguire just right now, his confidence is in the pits and he's not being that leader. I said this in my match reaction after the game against Southampton. I said, look, surely at halftime, somebody's going up there, going into that dressing room and slapping those players upside the head because somebody has to have that leadership to change that mentality switch. Everyone's just switching off at halftime. Somebody has to stop that from happening. And you would expect your captain to be one of the leading voices with that. He just isn't doing it at the moment. That's why Lindelof goes in for me. I think you could probably say Luke Shaw is lucky not to be dropped in this predicted 11. But you can bring Tellez in. But I think the issues may still lie in, in, the, in the space he leaves behind as well. Although, I'll be honest, Tellez has massively improved in that sense this season. In the same way that I think Delo has improved defensively too. But I would go for that. I'd go for Sancho on the right-hand side. I just want to see Sancho just hugging that position and not much else. I don't really want to see Sancho switching wings. I want to see Sancho stuck out there on the right-hand side and United using it because I think he could create a good partnership down there with Delo right now, who really is getting some excellent balls over the top. And with the, run, the sort of runs that Sancho makes, I think it could be excellent. Now, I would start Elanga instead of Rashford. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I don't think he's going to drop Cristiano Ronaldo. And I think that's just as much for the fact that who else is going to start there? more than anything else. And that is the big problem that Manchester United had this year with no real... We've got a 37-year-old and a 35-year-old striker. I think we need one in the summer. That's my predicted 11 for the game there. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Have I messed up? Have I missed anyone out? You let me know. I'm sure you will. If I make any mistakes, you always let me know anyway. But look, can we please stop 
this. Can we go out there, dominate that first half like we have in the last three, four games and see a game off? Seriously.